What's up and welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, please make sure you go to my website at letstalkdarling.com. Make sure you scroll on down to the bottom and subscribe. Well, don't subscribe, put your email in there so that I can stay in contact with you. Let me tell you something, it's getting very, very real for me on Instagram because I have gotten several messages from the Instagram um, police that a few of my posts have been labeled as violent or hateful when all I was doing was posting an article about something that actually happened. It wasn't like my opinion. Anyways, they have warned me that my account can now be potentially deleted. So do not delay, go to my website, put your email in there. That way I can stay in contact with you. I also have listed above, if you scroll up to the top of my website, all my social media platforms, just in case Instagram wants to play me and kick me off. I'm also on other platforms as well. Before we get started on this video, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the barking dog. I don't know what's going on with my dogs. You guys know these last few videos, they've been acting a fool, but we're just gonna keep carrying on and pretend like they're not there. Anyways, one last thing, please, please, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and please make sure you become a part of the Let's Talk fam. I have received a shipment from the folks at Uncle Tom with a bunch of free Uncle Tom movie one DVDs because they're coming out with number two now and they were kind enough to send them to me to give them away to you guys. So I'm only going to be able to give them away to the people that are part of the channel that are part of the Let's Talk fam. So please, please make sure that you go and subscribe and join the Let's Talk fam because today is the day we start the giveaway, okay? I want to start with the DVDs. Now my Let's Talk fam, they get money, okay? Those people are going to get the big prizes, but I will rotate the DVDs between my subscribers and my Let's Talk fam. So today, if you want to win a DVD, please make sure you drop a comment below that says Uncle Tom movie, okay? Make sure that you're subscribed because if you're not subscribed, I won't be able to get in contact with you, okay? Um, and I'm just gonna at random pick somebody from the comments to give a DVD away to. Now that won't be the first, okay? That won't be the first because I have several, but we're gonna be giving away some stuff. Okay, you guys. Enough about the channel, enough about the giveaways. Let's talk about something that I have been asked to talk about. People have been messaging me nonstop about this. They're like, when are you gonna talk about Cuba? When are you gonna talk about Cuba? Okay, we're gonna talk about Cuba today. The reason why I did not wanna talk about Cuba on day one was because I really wanted to see how we were all going to respond to what was going on in Cuba. So I wanted to kind of let it sink in a little bit. I also wanted to give myself some time to process because my initial reaction was one of like excitement that they were standing up for themselves and sadness for what was going on there. But after a few days, I actually had a different thought process about it. And that's why I wanted to make this video now so I can share it with you guys. And I really, really hope that you can take what I'm saying with the best of intentions, um, because I'm not saying it to be cruel or hateful. I am trying to be realistic with people who don't understand the severity of what has been going on there for many, many years, okay? Um, I, I, I'm not in, in any way talking down to anybody, but please understand that if you have never been outside the United States and you've never been to another country. Now, I'm not talking about the touristy areas of Mexico, okay, or Cancun or anything like that, or even countries like Jamaica. Unless you have really been outside of the touristic areas um, of, of other countries, you are not going to really understand what I'm talking about, okay? Um, and that's, you know, it's just, it's just something that happens when you gain experience traveling, which I have been blessed enough to do. Okay. So let's talk about this thing in Cuba. I'm going to first read an article to kind of catch everybody up on this. And then we're going to talk about my thoughts. Okay. So this is an article from Buzzfeed about the protests. Um, and it states the protest started on Sunday and have spread rapidly as thousands of Cubans are frustrated by hunger and basic shortage supplies. Now, a lot of news outlets are reporting that these protests are because of COVID and because people don't have groceries and food. 
First of all, the groceries and food has been something that has been a struggle there for a very long time because the government regulates it. That's how communism works, okay? You get a set amount of beans, of rice, um, in, in Cuba's case, right? Um, per month, you go there with a voucher, provided that you are behaving and doing everything that they are telling you to do and you're supporting the government, you get your voucher for your food. Now, if you are somebody who is not playing that game, those people tend to be punished by not getting their weekly or monthly rations um, of food, okay? But the media has really been grabbing onto just this point and also saying that they're frustrated because they haven't had access to the COVID vaccine. This is a false story. I'm not saying that it's not happening. I'm just saying this isn't the main reason for the protests, okay? This is about them wanting their basic God-given freedoms back, okay? I don't care what article you read, that's what it is. I know people from Cuba personally who tell me this stuff, okay? They have lived there, they either fled there or they still live there, um, and they know. They're, they're, the, they're my source of information. So let's keep reading this article. Anti-government protests have erupted in Cuba this week over the lack of access to food and basic supplies amid a rise in COVID cases. The country has suffered from massive inflation and long blackouts as long-standing U.S. sanctions that restrict access to basic goods and financing and decades of government corruption and mismanagement have been made worse by a decline in tourism during the pandemic, okay? The protests started on Sunday and have spread rapidly across the country as thousands of Cubans are frustrated by hunger and basic supply shortages. That's what happens when you live in a communist society. Our children are dying of hunger, shouted one protester in a video posted to Facebook. Another video on Twitter appeared to show protesters calling to change the system. The protests are the largest in recent memory and government forces, which are typically quick to repress demonstrations, initially struggled to retain control. Some musicians who, along with artists, faced suppression for speaking out, also made statements in support of the protesters. Intermittent internet shutdowns and harassment and detention of journalists have made it difficult to verify events on the ground. However, photos and videos have emerged showing both uniformed and plainclothes officers beating protesters with batons and appearing to shoot them. At least one person has been killed and Amnesty International said at least 150 others have been reported missing and may have been detained. Now there has been, um, and I may, if I still have it, I'll post it up here. There has been uh, videos that have come out and I don't know how these are coming out because if you've ever been to Cuba, um, it's very, very difficult to get internet access. In fact, there is a, a park there. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Um, I'll insert a picture of it here, but it's a park where it's like the only place where you can really get Wi-Fi. So when you go to the park, you'll see a lot of people just kind of huddled around because that's the only place they can really use their phone and get on the internet. Um, and again, this is as a result of communism, everything is controlled, okay? What they are able to access is controlled. Even if you visit there and you're not a, a Cuban citizen, um, you, you have to abide by those same restrictions, okay? Um, and there's also videos of, of um, police officers or soldiers or whatever they are breaking into people's homes and, and killing them and shooting them. And if anybody is protecting these protesters or helping them to transport through the city, they are also um, being detained, shot, they go up missing. You know, this, this report of people just missing is nothing new if you live outside of the United States, okay? I, I always laugh when I'm in another country and um, you see how Americans react to certain things that go on in other countries because they don't understand that the laws there don't protect you from a lot of things, okay? And that over there, you can easily disappear and nobody's going to question anything. They can't question anything because then you would be questioning the government's actions and they would punish you by withholding your paycheck, by withholding your weekly or monthly um, food stipends. Um, they could hurt your family. That stuff goes on regularly in a lot of countries, which again, if you have never been outside of the United States, you wouldn't know that, okay? While the government appears to have softened its stance somewhat, lifting a tax on importing goods to the island, it may not be enough to quell the protest. 
No, we don't want crumbs. We want liberty, freedom. Blood has not run in Cuban streets to be able to import a few more suitcases, tweeted a blogger and government critic, Yuani Sanchez. So basically, you know, they are, you know, trying to do what they can to lift, you know, some of the sanctions that have um, been imposed on them um, by, you know, trying to appease the mob. And it's not working because this is not about food. This is about freedom. They want their freedom back. Okay. Now stay, stay with me here on this video because I'm going to say something that's probably going to ruffle a few feathers, but I think it has to be said before I say that. I don't know if you guys remember um, a guy named Maximo Alvarez. He spoke at the um, RNC um, last year. Because I have seen people like this before. I've seen movements like this before. I've seen ideas like this before. And I am here to tell you, we cannot let them take over our country. I heard the promises of Fidel Castro, and I can never forget all those who grew up around me, who look like me, who suffered and starved and died because they believed those empty promises. And his speech was so moving to me, okay? Now, he's a Cuban refu re refugee, um, and he spoke at the RNC you know, warning that Americans were swallowing the pill of communism slowly but surely and that we needed to wake up and realize what was being done and that we, we cannot allow this to happen. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is it's going to be a lead in to what, to what I need to say, okay? So, um, Maximo Alvarez talked about when he was speaking at the RNC, he talked about his family escaping communism and praised America for being the land of the free. Now, he spoke at the RNC when President Trump was still president and he was running against Biden. Um, but he was recently re-interviewed again and he re-sounded the alarm um, in this interview saying, not only have they swallowed it, they have digested it. Listen to the media. They're no longer objective. You can tell how much they hate this country. Look at our academia, he continued. Our kids are not, are not being, they're indoctrinated. They are taught that America is a bad country, that we, are a bunch, that we are a bunch of racists, that we're bad people, and we have to pay back if this country was racist. I, he said, I'm sorry, he said, if this country was racist, I wouldn't be here. If this country was a racist country, most of us wouldn't be here because even some people in your family came from another country, okay? So he is a very, very interesting guy and I really, really highly suggest that if um, you want to hear more of some of the stuff that he said, um, look him up. Maximo Alvarez is his name. Again, I'm gonna try to link this interview down below, um, but he's a very, very good you know, uh, speaker when it comes to really expressing what it is like growing up in a communist country and how he feels the direction of the United States is going. Now, that being said, this is my thoughts on what's going on in Cuba. We have seen celebrities, mainly the recent one was Pitbull, okay, coming out and saying that we need to wake up and we need to stand with Cuba and we need to fight back. Here is my problem because I've been seeing a lot of people reposting this like, yes, Pitbull, you know, like glad to see somebody speaking out. I'm not impressed by that. Okay, let me tell you why. Because these celebrities stand up, okay, and talk about how we need to fight against what's going on in Cuba. But at the same time, they were all pro Biden and they were all pro BLM and, and all this other, you know, racial racial justice social justice warrior bullshit okay which is what leads to socialism before you have socialism okay i'm sorry before you have communism you have socialism that's the precursor to communism okay and and these people are are the same people that are that are standing up at award shows and posting on their social media sites about how great it is to not have President Trump in the office and how great it is to have President Biden and Kamala Harris and 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 how everything's going to be so great for everybody. They're full of shit.
What I want to hear is somebody, when they say we need to fight back, tell me specifically what you mean by fight back. What does that look like? Be specific with me about what you mean about we need to fight back against communism. Because if you mean what you say, that means we need to fight back against this current administration and everything that they are trying to implement into our society, into our schools, into our churches, the things that they're trying to take away from us, the things that they're trying to put in literature, in books, in TV shows, okay? That is all part of the indoctrination. In my mind, I want to hear them say how we fight back is we say no to that stuff, okay? What does this have to do with Cuba, Monique? Well, let me tell you something, okay? Cuba has already gone through this. They have been living in communism for years, so long that it is my belief that they are too far gone, okay? While I don't want to say we have to give up on them, okay? Um, that, that we don't have to pray for them, that we don't need to keep encouraging them to fight. We need to focus on making sure that this does not happen here on our soil. We cannot help Cuba and we cannot help ourselves. We are headed down the slippery slope to communism and we will be there in six months to a year if we don't get our act together, okay? Now, I encourage the Cuban people to fight. Have your voices heard. Die on the hill to fight for your freedom, okay? Do I think that they're going to be successful? Sadly, no, and this is why. Even if they were to get the current, um, you know, um, leadership out of there, right? Who else is gonna step up? What's the plan? How are they gonna fix it? It's not just about one person. The corruption runs incredibly deep, okay? Incredibly deep. Look at Venezuela. Venezuela is a very, very great example, okay? Of how just electing somebody doesn't fix the problems. The corruption is very deep. I am sad to say that in my opinion, I think it is too late for Cuba for them to win this fight, okay? Sometimes when God puts a situation upon us, right? And we look at it and we think to ourselves, why did this happen? Why is this happening? How much more can we take? It's because we're not learning the lesson, okay? Our lesson right now, is not to swoop in and save Cuba, to beg Jeff Bezos of Amazon to, sh to send a, a, a jumbo jet or a Freightliner over to Cuba with, with, with groceries. That is a temporary fix to a very, very large wound, okay, that I don't think is fixable. We need to focus on our country. We need to get these leaders out. They want to implement communism and socialism here otherwise we are going to be looking like cuba in a few years looking and saying how did this happen to us i hope i hope that that doesn't happen but if it does hopefully you'll be able to look back at some of us youtubers who have been sitting here day after day after day telling you guys this and in the comments you have people responding back saying oh you are just a republican a conservative a, a capitalist right well we'll see what tune you're singing when you no longer get to go to a costco and load up your cart full of food we'll see what tune you're singing when you have to wait three months for your socialist medicine appointment Okay, that's already happening. If you've used Obamacare, you know what that is. It's not better. It's not what we want. So take a look at Cuba. Take a long, hard look at Cuba and ask yourself, do you want that for yourself? Because if you don't want that for yourself, stop focusing on racism and equality, you know, sexual equality and all this other stuff. Focus on your rights, focus on your freedoms. And if you see that not just your freedoms, but other people's freedoms are being impeded on, it's going to be a problem for you eventually. 
That's all that I have to say for this video. I definitely want to hear what you guys think in the comments box below. If I upset some of you, I'm sorry, but it has to be said. I do pray for Cuba. I do stand with Cuba, but I am an, am an American first and foremost, and I stand with America. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Do not forget to like this video and don't forget to come back for another one. And definitely don't forget to subscribe and join the Let's Talk fam because I am going to be pulling a winner for the Uncle Tom DVD in two days. All right, I'll get back with you guys later. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.